Hey everyone, this is Scrap Computer here. This is part 2 of my jungle guide. If you have not seen part 1, please go back and refer to it. You need to know the basic to advanced concepts and mechanics I covered in part 1 to truly be a rounded jungler. I don't care if you're diamond, please watch part 1, I truly do think it is worth your time. It will be on the screen now. Sorry about that and moving on. This guide will be covering a range of important topics such as types of ganking, ganking etiquettes, who you should gank generally speaking, what's a successful gank and who should get the kills, and of course a few tips and tricks. Remember to look in the description for all of the timestamps and subjects I'm going to cover. Now let's project ourselves into this guide. Ganking First up, what exactly is ganking? Ganking refers to the act of ambushing one or more players with the intent of scoring a kill, slash to push them out of lane or burn some summoner spells. It is one of the most important aspects of the jungle role. As while well, anyone in the match can effectively gank to some extent, the jungler is the champion who has the greatest capacity to do so, as he is not bound to any particular lane allowing him slash her to freely roam across the map to appear wherever they are needed most, as no one can call missing on them at all and the jungle can provide no vision on them. As the game progresses and more and more champions begin to roam the map and band together as opposing to extending out alone, ganking becomes less limited to the jungler and less of an important factor to the success overall but nonetheless remains an important element of team strategy all the way up to the game's end. Some champions are better at ganking than others, obviously. In particular, champions with very powerful or plentiful crowd controls tend to be stronger at ganks than those without for obvious reasons. For example, Shaku can gank a lane as early as level 2 with only the Lizard Elder buff for aid. The slow it provides and the fear in the jack in the box can lock down an enemy for several seconds, potentially allowing Shaco to kill him before they can escape. Conversely, champions who have little to no crowd control such as Shivana or have crowd control that can be difficult to unreliable to use effectively such as Dr. Mundo will often find themselves hard pressed to obtain kills during ganks. A few specific junglers may have very poor initial ganking but upon obtaining their ultimate can later gank with much more success. In such cases, the jungling champion will often focus solely on farming for the early game and later transition to ganking more heavily once level 6 has been ascertained. A good example of this is Warwick who holds no ganking potential really at all until his level 6. I have a general guide on jungling champions which is here. This is my how to pick your jungler guide and is useful to the new junglers. Ok, now the most important section of all that I have to cover. The several different types of ganks that can be observed in League of Legends. Do note that these ganks can be done by any lane slash any champion for the most part unless I mention otherwise in the requirements. But I will be presenting them mainly for the jungler as this is a jungle guide but again this can be done by any laner if you're mid lane look at all of these ganks you can do them all within reason. In addition I will explain how to gank properly and how to observe proper ganking etiquettes after the types of ganks. This section has two things that I must explain before I get into the ganks. I will be giving two stats in these sections. The first, stealth level. I will be giving a stat on how stealthy the approach is and how often you can sneak into this gank spot. This is a very, very, very generalized score, do note. Please don't comment on how certain champions break a stealth level as well, because these are generalized scores. For example, Evelyn breaks all of these scores completely. The second, attributes needed. This stat will provide a few things that will be needed 100% to pull this type of gank off. Now please do note, for this section it's always nice to have CC slash gap closers, but if they are not mentioned they are not needed, but they are still nice. Please note the difference. 
And in this section, the slash attributes will be separated by, wait for it, my favorite word, a slash. This means you must have one or more of the items separated by a slash. An absolute final note. Colors in this guide actually mean stuff, as with all of my guides. Red means bad, orange means hard moderate, yellow means light moderate, and green means good. Blue arrows symbolize blue side gank paths, and purple arrows symbolize purple side gank paths. So people don't just think I'm a kid randomly putting in color, they provide more than a static value. And pretty colors, right? <laughs> now into the ganks. River ganks. Stealth level, low to moderate. Attributes needed, none. River ganks are the most common type of gank, and involves the jungler approaching a lane through the river, entering the bush there, and beginning his assault on the opposing enemy team or lane once correct positioning is established. This type of gank is most readily available to any jungler and, depending upon the mobility of the ganking champion, can work successfully, even against opponents who have not extended significantly beyond their own side bush. As a trade-off for its ease of use, however, river ganks are among the easiest to spot ahead of time for any competent team. A single ward in the river can quickly warn a laner of the jungler's intentions and allow them to back off quite easily to avoid the danger. The other types of ganks most often occur to bypass this vision of the river. River ganks tend to be more successful at the top lane for purple team side members and bot lane for blue side team members because it cuts off their escape most easily. Bot teams on the opposing side have access to the loop gank I'll cover later to compensate for this. Side ganks. Stealth level, moderate to high. Attributes needed, none. Side ganks, also known as lean ganks, involves a jungler entering the side bush in order to get very close to his targets before initiating the gank. This type of gank has many more limitations than a simple river gank, as it can only be done by the bot or top lanes, and relies on a lack of vision in the bush from the enemy team and of course a lack of vision on the jungler as he enters it in order to maintain an element of surprise. This type of gank is more commonly done at the top lane than at the bot lane, as the latter contains a support champion who has the responsibility of keeping that side bush warded. But when pulled off in either case, it can be extremely deadly due to the sheer proximity of the ganking champion allowing him to almost immediately lock down his target and prevent them from fleeing. Jungling champions who do not have a strong blink or dash ability, such as Udyr, will often benefit greatly from a side gank, as their mobility issues become irrelevant at such close ranges. Loop Ganks Stealth level, moderate to high. This gank's start game has a pretty high success rate, as lack of wards means that you can do this loop with the minimal risk of being seen. Attributes needed, none. Loop ganks pose some significant risks to the jungler. If their initial approach into the enemy jungle is spotted early on a ward, it is almost always a death sentence, as the opposing team can act together to corner and slay the champion as he makes his way down into the lane, unaware of what's happening. If pulled off correctly, however, it can be equally devastating to an unaware laner. As with the use of the tribush to disguise their approach, the jungler will end up directly behind the target. So, does not have to immediately use their abilities to close the gap or CC them, and can save them for when the laner tries to run away. A note to this can be seen on the diagrams. Blue side can't use this route to loop gank bot lane as it would turn into a turret dive gank. The same goes for the purple side team's jungler. He cannot use this versus the blue side top laner without it turning into a turret dive. So I left it out of the diagram, if any of you are wondering and have a keen eye for this kind of thing. Turret dive ganks. Stealth level, low to very high. This depends if you're going behind your enemies in the tri bush like I've mentioned before, or hiding in a bush to flash over, etc or if you're just pretending to push and jumping on the enemy suddenly when they know you're there. This depends massively on you and of course your enemy. Attributes needed, 
cc slash tanky slash burst slash gap closers. These are not suggestions, these are necessities. Have at least two of these attributes or be extremely ridiculously fed. Pick. Please do not turret dive without any of these things. The riskiest gank of all to perform. This type of gank is exactly what the name implies. Involving the jungler collaborating with his allies to trap and kill enemies who are under the apparent safety of their turret. This gank can be done on any laner through the use of the jungle. Bot and top lane for purple and blue team respectively use the path and small bush directly behind the turret. An opposing side makes use of the grass near the column camp. Mid lane tower dives make use of the path near the giant wolf spawns. Turret dives can have massive consequences if part of the dive is performed improperly due to the presence of the turret, which contributes massive damage output on a champion who attacks an ally within its range. A miscommunication between members of a team can lead to one or more allied champions being killed in the dive, which can often offset the benefits of diving in the first place. Junglers who are most suited to performing turret dive ganks are ones that have abilities that can let them easily tank several turret shots and buy the team more time to obtain a kill. A good example is Alistair. Are ones that have extremely high burst potential, allowing them to rapidly decimate enemy champions before the enemy turret can even do significant damage, such as Zed. Direct ganks. Stealth level, very low to low. General score, not counting champions like Evelyn or Shaco who clearly break this clause, for most champion it's impossible to sneak up. Attributes needed, heavy CC, heavy gap closers or of course stealth. A direct gank, as the name implies, involves the ganking champion dispensing with all forms of subtlety and approaching his targets by walking directly down the lane towards the enemy laners. This type of gank is usually only done as a last resort against enemy lanes that are heavily fortified with wards, as this type of gank does not have an especially high chance of success. Though this gank is technically available to all junglers, it is only in practice available to a very specific few who are capable of successfully pulling one off. Almost invariably, a direct ganking champion will boast enormous mobility and multiple means of closing a gap with his opponents, as well as strong crowd controls. A famous example of such a jungler is Hecarim, who has access to a movement speed boosting ability, devastating charge, a long ranged gap closer, Onslaught of the Shadows, and a method of movement impairment, Onslaught of the Shadows, which combine together to allow him to storm into a lane at high speed and quickly suppress a target champion before they can enact countermeasures against him. Jump River Ganks I have never heard of anyone describing or using this type of gank beyond a very few rarities. I'm just applying a name towards it. There is no name for this gank. I think I've kind of invented one. I'm not sure. I didn't invent the gank, just the name, okay? Stealth level. Very high. People don't often ward this bush and only ward the dragon for more advanced and further vision. Ask your allies if this bush is warded. If it is, clearly do not even try this gank. Attributes needed. Jump slash blink. This is to get in position for this gank. A link again to all of the junglers with one. Click on this please. Watch the section, then close the video. This gank is a simple river gank with a change. If you blink from your jungle into the thin bush beside the top slash mid lane, you can skip deeper wards by jumping into the thin bush beside the lane. This allows you to bypass the general dragon wards that will normally notice you or the tri wards. This leaves us with a cooldown on our blink that we must wait to go on cooldown, but allows us the perfect stealth position for a fantastic gank. As the lane you're ganking have the utmost confidence they're safe, they will be surprised seeing a wild Zack appear for the double kill and ganking a quote unquote warded lane. This type of gank can work successfully against most opponents. Just read the river gank section again, as it is exactly the same besides the fact that this one is a lot more stealthy. Of course, ensure no wards are in the bush before you try it. Just ask your laner, please. 
Teleport Ganks Stealth level, very high. The enemy will expect this gank or completely forget about it, which is more common. Whichever happens, they will still have only a literal second to react to your teleport, assuming they even see it. Which shouldn't happen if your allies have properly deported for you. Attributes needed The Teleport Summoner spell and hidden wards in your lane that you're ganking. You can do this on deep minions by teleporting onto them if your enemy are going very deep, but this won't happen often. This gank involves teleporting into the lane you're ganking by the use of a hidden ward slash a deep ally minion. Although an uncommon gank for a jungler to use in practice, it can be used to great effect and can leave all of the lanes playing defensively with a mass amount of fear knowing that you have the ability to turn the tides of battle in a matter of seconds. I've only seen two junglers ever use this ability as a strict and very intentional tactic, me and a random trundle player, as most people only associate this type of gank as strictly a top lane practice. I urge you to give it a go. It is extremely effective if used correctly and in sequence with some heavy CC. The only problem with this route is the heavy cooldown on teleport and the necessity of taking teleport as a mandatory requirement, leaving you without an exhaust slash ignite or a flash or whatever you wanted, which scale better, just note that. Global Ganks Stealth level high to very high. You can only be spotted by extremely deep wards. Attributes needed Global Abilities Obviously. I'm at risk of being starky, but anyways, a thin line my friends, a thin line. I'll link again to all of the junglers with the global ability. Watch the section, then close the video. A global gank makes use of mass and map pressure based abilities to enable ganks on even the most heavily fortified lanes, as they have the ability to bypass all wards and come from seemingly nowhere. This type of gank can nearly always catch enemies unaware until it's too late for them with the huge range on most global abilities. This type of gank is virtually unavoidable, but takes a level 6 jungler to obtain the global ability which can take time. A note is that this type of gank can be used in sequence with the teleport gank from your top laner to completely steamroll a lane, mainly bot, slash big objectives, mainly dragon. The diagram shows the most popular jump zones on the yellow spots, but do note this type of gank is extremely versatile. You can use it on virtually any jump zone within reason. In addition, a lot of global ganks are basically direct ganks with a global ability used to gap close. Just wanted to add the pretexts to avoid misconceptions, sorry. Counter ganks, stealth level, low to very high. It greatly depends if they expect you. This is the most versatile type of gank I cannot explain to you in black and white anyway. This can vary massively. This type of gank makes and breaks games. Attributes needed. None, but it's nice to have good dueling prowess, CC, damage, mass mobility, as always. I left this type of gank to last as it is completely different to all of the other ones and is, as I've mentioned, versatile. It will change every time you do it. So I'm just going to go over the common traits and explain to you basically what it is. A counter gank is the act of a champion entering a lane where an enemy gank is already in progress with the intent of turning the fight in their favour. This type of gank follows the same rules as before in that good warning can alert the enemy team to an incoming threat and let them back off without suffering casualties, but also greatly and equally depends on the junglers themselves. Strong counter ganking junglers are champions who have excellent map mobility and can react quickly to ganks happening anywhere, regardless of their current location, such as Ramis and his Powerball. Junglers who are resistant to being counter ganked themselves are champions whose method of crowd control are divorced from their method of escape, letting them rapidly switch from attacking to retreating when the need arises, such as Jax. This is less of a gank and more of a reactionary based rotation from the jungler, if you don't see them on wards beforehand, 
but for ensuring this stays simple, we shall put the term as a counter gank. Basically, it's seeing a gank in action and going and stopping it, or seeing a gank in a ward about to happen and rotating down to try and counter that gank. After people have used their main amount of spells, they're very vulnerable to a cleanup, hence the counter gank is there. Or, your presence can stop the gank from going all haywire. If you come into lane as a Lee, they're not going to chase them under turret for the free kills. They're scared of you. Very simple. General Ganking Pretext This section is going to cover general ganking advice and pretexts before you gank. Communication is key. I know that's rich coming from my broken English. Before I even get into the tips, before I even consider telling you what lane to gank, before I even consider telling you how to gank, you must ask or know the following before you even step foot into lane, before a single toe touches a lane. Please listen guys, this is the one thing you have to listen to. It's a simple one, two, three. This section will make or break the best junglers. Number one, is it warded slash where? I mean ask this in the chat. If it is warded, tell them to ping where. Simple. Leaners, for God's sake, oh my God, please keep an eye on wards. Please, please. Maybe not the exact placement if you don't get to see it. I'm not expecting that. But tell the effing jungler the lane is warded somewhere. Nothing more annoying than a jungler walking into lane and then <laughs> your time's wasted. You sitting top and not saying anything, letting the jungler, normally me, waste his slash her time on the jungling route and ganking for you. How would you feel if you ganked mid and you told them you were coming and when you got there, the mid lane finally said, oh, oh, um, it's warded there. You would be goddamn outraged and rightly so. Well, it's the same for the effing jungler, so please, oh pretty please, with little sprinkles on top, say if it's warded somewhere, please. If you're god mode, you can even say the placement of the ward. If you do this, I guarantee you'll win more games. I guarantee it. Number two, any summoner spells down? If so, which? This will lead on to my later points, but seriously, it's easy to know if someone used the flash, their ghost, or barrier. If they did, tell it in chat. Example, Olaf flashed down. Now your jungler knows the laner is a lot more vulnerable than he normally would be. Communication is useful, communicating anything. Do not let the jungler not know this key bit of information. Number three, this one is only done by high level players. I wonder why. Any ultimates down. This is so important to know. People underestimate this in the laning phase and think, the ultimate top is only my problem. This is flat out wrong. I'm sorry for these three sections, I'm getting a little bit annoyed. It could affect the entire team, but mostly the jungler in the laning phase. When I'm ganking any lane, example top, I ask, is his slash her ultimate up? If it's applicable, if it's a good escape based slash de-initiate based uh, ultimate. And I sometimes get, and I'm not joking, I don't know, back. What do you mean you don't know? You're in his lane. <sighs> Look, when a Malphite has his ultimate up, it makes it a crap ton harder for me to gank him. Just tell the team, but mainly the jungler, that the ultimate is down. Don't make me waste my global ultimate to gank for you. This advice is for all lanes. Don't you think you get away from it if you're on the bot lane? If the Sona's ultimate is down, it is unbelievably more easy to gank bot lane, as they can't just de-initiate with it. Please just mention it, your team will thank you for it, and it means you're being an absolute grand teammate, which is important. A note on this, and further ramblings and or rants, is that I've made a guide slash I'm going to make a guide within the next few weeks on communication. You should check it out, I'm going to go in, oh, you know, I'll go in further detail there. So, before you go into a lane, it's a simple one, two, three knockout. Is it warded? Number one. Number two, any summoner spells down. If they're not communicating, ask. Number three, any ultimates down if they are applicable. Obviously, if you're going bot lane and it's, and it's a Soraka fucking misfortune, you don't have to know that. 
But if it's applicable, do you ask? If you don't ask, you will not know. Like, knowledge is power, guys. This game is so much based around knowing what your enemy has and hasn't got. And many people forget about these simple, simple, simple things. Just do them, guys. Sorry, this is the only section I'm going to get ramped up about. But please, for God's sake, leaners and junglers, ask and tell. Who to gank for? This is an extremely difficult subject to cover because choosing a lane to gank has just so many variables to take into consideration. I will go over the most logical slash common lanes you should be ganking and a few rants along with them. Do note that this will not be only covering the lanes you should gank generally, but what lanes you should be ganking or at least paying more attention to. I will cover the situational circumstances in the next section. For now, it's only lanes. By the way, why in the text you're about to see means your, as in your lane. This section is the least important section as I generalize quite heavily, but it's still important to take into consideration in this guide to let you get the logical and methodical thought process on who you should be ganking. Now into it. Your snowbally lanes. One of the most popular types of lane to gank is a snowbally lane. If you gank for say a Riven early and she gets a kill, hence gets a head, this will become a massive snowball session for your top lane. If nothing is done about this snowball, it will get out of hand and nearly always ensures your victory, as the enemy top laner will not be able to do anything. The same goes for a bot lane Draven for example. If he gets first blood, he nearly always will stomp all game, unless he misplays massively. Try to gank these snowball aliens early and perpetuate their lead very quickly. Your countered lanes. If you have a heavily countered teammate, it means you have to get on your Santa's little helper socks. You may have to camp this lane to get them over the laning phase, but to the people that are countered out there, the jungler has to farm and he has to help other lanes. Do not feel entitled to all of the ganks all game. I'm kind of sick of this mentality. I was playing earlier versus a first pick Nasus, who automatically got countered by a top lane Teemo, which obviously for anyone who knows the matchup is extremely not good <laughs> for that Nasus. Anyway, I ganked him two times, start game and this gave him quite a little small lead, but he kept on asking for more and more ganks, even though bot and mid lane were overextended and I was behind in farm. To these people, ignore them. If they keep on asking for ganks and all of the ganks, you cannot supply them with it. You have to help all of the lanes and all of the jungle. But of course, do try to orientate yourself over these people. Countered lanes, generally speaking, are good late game scalers. So, do try to help them out but do not gank only solely for them. Your weak start game lanes. This is basically a semi countered lane because they get beaten by essentially everything. I always camp these lanes when they are on my team to help them out. A good example is Kassadin and his pathetic start game but godlike mid slash late game. This guy will need help until his six, obviously. Give these types of lane an extra gank or maybe two, but don't only help them as I've mentioned before. Remember, all lanes need help to carry, not just this one. When against this type of lane, I just camp it and do the same. Versus lanes with a weak escape. For obvious reasons, these lanes should be camped by you completely if you are against them. They have no escape, hence are weak to ganks. You're behind lanes. If a laner on my team is ever behind, I try to give them a gank to get them back into the game. I gank for these guys to ensure they can stay at least in the game somewhat. If a lane is only a little behind, I give them at least one to two extra ganks to help them get back in. But if a lane is over minus five or minus five itself, I leave them completely alone and tell them to farm under turret and back off without ever engaging the fellow laner. If they can't do this, they are not worth giving a kill to anyway, as it means they're unintelligent, which means their carry potential is non-existent. Your ahead lanes. 
If a leaner on my team is ahead heavily, we want to perpetuate this advantage as heavily as possible. A driven lane with more kills means it's GG. This works best with a snowballing lane for obvious reasons. Ahead lanes are not wasted ganks, like many people seem to think. If we give a lane who is ahead another kill, it could completely spiral them out of control, meaning that they could even double kill the jungler and the laner. I don't see this as a waste ever. A massive tip, listen to this. If someone is raging, do not gank for them, or at least only gank once. If someone is on tilt, they cannot carry because they are not in the right mindset. Help another. This will meet a lot of force from these guys, you are going to be very annoyed. But this is a personal choice. You can't throw the dice and help the rager out. You don't know if they're going to AFK or if they're just going to go AFK mode in their brain. They're just going to actually play and just get angry and flame everyone else and they're just not in the mindset of a champion. They're not going to help you win. I have always ganked for people that are on tilt and they never help me win. They overextend, they don't think about decisions because they're using their amygdala. You have to help people that are playing it cool and actually trying to win. Do not help ragers. When to gank? On now go over circumstances, you should generally gank in. These are 100% rules and work for general teams slash lanes, unlike my previous section which was a conceptual level thought. These are circumstances that you should always, always take advantage of regardless of the lane. Number 1. Overextended lanes This is the most common type of lane for you to gank, and ensure you in fact do so. Even if an overextended lane is warded, you can catch them before they get back to the safety of their turret. People think they are safe with wards. I'm here to tell you that a hard gank bot on a heavily overextended lane won't give them enough time to react and will lead to free kills. Ensure you do in fact gank this type of lane. If they are deep beside your turret, punish the shit out of them. Number 2. Low HP lanes. Pretty obvious. If a lane is on low HP, this normally will result in a couple of kills or at least a free flash. Remember, when an enemy champion is low, you can even risk turret diving them. People get so scared to turret dive early, but I personally always take the risk. Don't expect to get away from me with a bar of HP under your turret. This is situational though, don't always turret dive unless it's a sure-ish thing. Number 3. Low slash no mana lanes If a lane has no mana, it means that all of their escapes slash abilities are down and will leave them completely vulnerable. Like with low HP lanes, it's a kill or at least a free summoner. This point is nearly forgotten over the low HP lanes, but is one that is very important. A Kassadin that has no mana is worthless and has no escape, in other words is a free kill. Number 4. Non Warded Lanes Oh alas, my favourite lane, you ballsy people. As soon as a lane says no wards, I literally beeline towards that lane, licking my lips, mmm, scrumptious. This is a lane you should gank without hesitation. Because of the trinkets in season 4, people think, actually you know what, they don't think and don't buy wards, assuming their trinkets will save them. So I am trying to help change people's perception of the trinkets. I should show them how painful a cooldown on a trinket is and why you should actually buy a ward. Just gank these free kill lanes, they truly, truly deserve it. Number 5. Lanes with summoner spells down, mainly flash and ghost. This point is only put into play by good and experienced players. When I see in the chat, top lane no flash, I go straight up there to force a kill or at minimum push the champion out of a lane. If they have no escape, just camp the crap out of them. They have no flash. When flash is down, they are one of the most vulnerable lanes in the map. Make them play this way by commonly ganking lanes without summoners. It makes ganking just a hell of a lot easier. Number 6. 
Lanes with ultimates down. This only applies to ultimates that can help the lane escape. Always try to gank lanes that have big ultimates down. It makes your time a lot more easy and leaves them extremely vulnerable. Simple, I've mentioned it before, but please take this point into consideration. It is very important. Number seven, a lane who is complaining about being quote unquote camped. My second favorite type of lane. If someone complains about being camped, we now know 100% they get pissed off by it. They're going and tilt and let's help them flip over. I gank this lane again and again and again and again and again to put them under pressure and make them rage further. A low tactic on my behalf and I'm ashamed to say it, but hell it works so much. That's what you get for being a rager. This person hates being ganked. They are on tilt and clearly have little to no map awareness. Camp them. Pitch up a tent, roast up some marshmallows and sit over a pink ward. That's all you gotta do my friends. This is an underestimated type of lane to gank. People who complain about it, gank them. These are the main 99% of times that you should gank. Look at them guys. These are the most important things to look at. These are the seven mean, mean times to gank. There is no trickity trick way. There's no sneaky way to do it. These are the times you gank. They're very simplistic. Of course, there's gonna be stagnant times where nothing's happening and you're just gonna go down and try to gank anyway. But these are specific scenarios that you should take advantage of and are very commonplace on the map. This is a very important section. Unlike the previous one, which was over conceptual stuff, I want to emphasize that. When not to gank. Number one, never gank when there is a big wave, minion wave, against the turret, like this. Unless your teammate is low HP and risk of being turret dove. If not, let them CS the creeps and get their levels up, and more importantly, get the gold from the minions. Here is a clip of someone losing CS because the jungler ignored that the minions were at the turret. Let's count. See how much gold he lost? Just wait like 10 seconds to let the leader get the CS. Then go, or avoid the lane and do a single camp for a small amount of time. Don't get me wrong, if it's a small wave like 5 CS, you can't dive. But if not, please do not gank when there is a massive wave against the turret, please. Number two, when your laner has low HP slash mana. This is time to let them go back. Don't ping the target frantically and trying to make them join the fight, cause they're too low to do so. Either you will get the kill on the enemy laner or you will not get the kill. Do not risk the laner's death. This will put them too far behind even if you get the kill after. Do not let them join the fight. Tell them you will cover the lane for them and let them back. Hold it for them by going under the turret and just last hitting. They will appreciate the help. Come back and loop around once they have full HP slash mana so they can actually help and are not at risk of dying. Number three, when you are risking buffs or double buffs. If there is even a smallish to moderate chance of you losing buffs, do not risk them. This could spell game over if you give an enemy leaner double buffs. Ganking with double buffs is extremely powerful, but if you're on lowish HP and not sure about the gank's success or your survival, do not go. I've seen this mistake too often. One mistake that could cost you the game. Double buffs on an enemy laner could spell absolute game over for that laner and of course your accessibility into that lane because they're so powerful that you won't be even be able to gank them. Number four, when you are on low HP slash mana. Oh my god, this is obvious. Well, apparently not. If you're less than half HP, don't even think about ganking unless it's an absolute completely free kill. If on even near half HP, think about your opponent and if they are nearly a free kill, go for it. If not, do not go. If they have burst, I disadvise against even ganking because they could just blow you up. If you have more than half, you're okay. 
Otherwise, please do not go. Look at your HP and take into mass consideration your survival. Number 5. You don't have your CC. This only applies to certain junglers like Amumu, who needs level 4 to gank. I know he can do it at 3, don't mention. If you don't have the CC or catch capability to gank early, plain just do not do it, unless it's a completely free kill on an overextended lane. If not, just farm until you get the level 4. Be patient. Do not waste time when you cannot p catch them anyway. If your team can play and tell them you need level 4, they'll understand. Literal ganking advice, tips and tricks. This section will be covering the literal tips of ganking, when you're actually attacking the target and how to approach ganks properly, along with things you must keep in mind when ganking. Do you know that these rules will come after the when not to gank rules? Remember, you should not be ganking a lane I've advised you not to. This section isn't going over that though, it's going over literally attacking a lane. Ping the target early. This will let the laner know that you are coming, and who to target in some cases. This will also normally make your ally try to bait the target into a little fight if he can, or try to get the target into a better position for you to gank. People naturally do this. You have to tell people you're coming. I've mentioned this before, but pings give your teammates a much better position to know how they can respond to a gank. It gives them time to figure out how they're going to, you know, help you in the gank, not just for, you know, your sake of mind. People, please do this thing. Please ping the target. Please. It will make your ganks 10 times more successful, I guarantee. Wait and hold fast. If you are unseen and you can wait, do. Wait for the perfect moment to go all in. When the lanes are smashing together, when the laner uses his escape like Zed using his shadow, when the laner uses a massive CC, or even just when they push a little bit more into your territory. Any of these. If you can wait for them, then do it, then go in. It's the most important thing when ganking, especially the middle lane, but applies to all lanes. Please, if you have an opportunity to wait, do. Stagger crowd controls. This is the easiest advice to give and the hardest to follow. Don't stun someone who is getting knocked up or already stunned. Basic. Avoid stacking multiple slows slash AC. You want to make sure that your target spends the most amount of time disabled or unable to run as possible. In practice, this is rather difficult to achieve because you have no control over your allies. Go that extra mile to look for things like animation of crowd control moves and react appropriately and keep an eye on the white CC line to ensure you don't stack anything. This is so important. When you're ganking, do not stack CC. Let them engage with their CC and save yours for the vital moment. Save gap closers slash CC. You should save these until the last possible second. If you can walk up and auto attack with your red buff before using CC, do it, please. If the enemy don't respond quickly enough, don't use your gap closers immediately panicking. A good example of this is a Lee Sin, who always makes this mistake. Lee Sins will go into auto attack range, actually even achieve this without having to use their Q, but instead of saving it, they use their EQ combo immediately and jump into them for the quick damage rather than running up, using their E, auto attacking a few more times, queuing and baiting out the flash with the Q. Once they do flash, you can follow them. Or a Maokai, who can walk up, EQ them and knock them back obviously, then hit them with a couple of auto attacks and try to bait out the flash before using his root. People just jump in and use the root immediately, panicking, I've got to get close quickly. <sighs> this is wrong. This means your enemy can flash and be safe because you no longer have any gap closers. Save your gap closers if you can. Of course, if they are deep and you have to use your gap closers, you're gonna have to do it obviously, you have to use them immediately. But if you ever get a chance to get close enough to, to save the gap closer, please do so guys, please. Shadow step. When the enemy move, command walk in front of their steps. 
making your champion shadow them. This means you can walk beside, auto attack, walk beside, auto attack, rinse and repeat. This is the most important thing people do incorrectly while playing melee champions. Regardless of who your champion is, walk, auto attack. If you don't do this, it means you miss out on free auto attack damage, which is huge start slash mid game, especially when you have a red buff on, repocking the slow. This is shown below when it's done correctly and incorrectly. See the absolutely massive difference in damage. Please guys, shadow step. Look in the left and look in the right. Do you see this insane difference? I'm not even using abilities. Cut off the escape. A friend told me that this was obvious and not to put it in the guide. I disagreed. I've seen this mistake at every single level of play. So to check it, we looked at his recent jungle games on LOL Replay. He is a Platinum 1 jungle main, by the way. He did not correctly cut off escapes and beeline towards the enemy 3 out of 5 ganks that he pulled. He could not believe that he made this mistake. It is extremely important to cut off the enemy escape route of any lane if ever possible. If you get behind them in the top lane for example with a loop gank, run down towards the bushes in the middle. Which is you basically saying, if you go there I'll meet you there don't you worry. Create a meat shield between bush cover and force them to walk in between minions and get body blocked by them or at least take a longer route round. Here's a pro tip, minion block is OP. I always try and direct my little minions who I'm attacking towards my literal minions if ever possible. Professional players do the same, they usher them into the minions so they have to walk around them or take way longer routes. If you want to be a pro, let's say you do, do this. Always think about your ganking angle and where your enemy are going to escape from. The biggest thing to note is bush control, once they try to run people try and duke in bushes. Run to the bush, call their bluff, walk towards it, you're gonna veer them away from it and they're going to panic because most people usually get away from this. Ward the bush they're about to go into, constantly think guys, constantly think. Bush cover running. If you're ganking a lane and they run towards the bush or about to go into a bush, ward the goddamn bush with your trinket slash wards. When you ward the bush, they know they have nowhere to hide. It will make them panic, believe me. When you don't even give them a second of free bush time to think, this can panic the best of players. It also takes out massive juke potential away from your prey. Please guys, just ward the bush they're about to go into or in. It will require quick thinking, but completely counters juke champions. Last but not least, give up. You won't hear me saying that much. Don't try too hard on a failed gank. If you're spotted and the enemy withdraws prematurely, don't stick around. Do something else. Your position is already compromised and the enemy already knows where you are. As a ganker, you're supporting your allies. If you are detected, you become a liability because the enemy could gank you. If you suspect your gank isn't going to work and they just back out, don't go for it, come back later. What counts as a successful gank? This is seemingly an ambiguous statement for some reason. Even though nearly any gank that done even something I could count as minimally successful. I'll go over the levels of success as represented on this gauge. I handmade in photoshop because I suck. Sorry guys my aesthetically pleasing diagrams kinda suck because I'm right hand sided brain, sorry. Do you note that there are more but I'm just going over the most common occurrences and what generally I count as successful and what of course you should count also as successful. The gauge will work by depicting the success of the gank in a decrementing fashion from plus 5 to minus 5. Oh by the way for the diagram EL stands for enemy leaner, now into it. Plus 5. You slash your teammate kills the enemy laner. This is clearly the desired outcome. You want to kill the enemy laner for the gold. Everyone counts this as a successful gank. I don't have to go over why. Plus 4. 
you push the enemy laner out of lane so they have to base. This is, believe it or not, a heavily successful gank. Lower level slash new players see this as not a great gank. I disagree. This is just as successful as an enemy laner kill. Yes, it is just as successful as killing the enemy laner and gives your laner just as much. You can push the turret, maybe get the turret, deny the enemy of a lot of CS, get a free back, get free gold, experience and of course, coming on from that levels. This can give your laner an extra level or maybe even two in lane. How is that not epic in addition to the extra two 300 gold from the minions? Or even the turret which you put it up to 400 gold and 150 for all your team. In addition, turret damage even at the unsuccessful end and extra gold. Come on, this is an extremely heavily successful gank. Plus three, you burn an enemy laner summoner spell S. This again is considered a feel gank by many people. This is to me kind of laughable. If you burn any summoner spells on an enemy laner it is extremely beneficial and of course a great gank. As now your laner can play a lot more aggressively and more importantly it means you can come back and gank a lot more easily again. Because of this the enemy laner will play defensively. Remember. A lane without flash is an easy gank, so if you burn this flash, you can come back immediately or one minute later for an easier to guaranteed kill. This gank is very successful for leadups and just generally speaking. Plus two, you damage the enemy laner. This again I still consider successful. If you do a bit of damage on the enemy laner, you can give your laner a small to moderate advantage in lane. An extremely underestimated gank. If you get 4 to 500 HP off a laner, it now means that your laner has quite a tilted advantage in lane, as they now have better all in potential with more HP. Or it could make a lane even if the enemy is ahead because you took off his HP. Overall, a successful gank. Plus 1. You zone slash back the enemy laner off some CS or some XP. This is to many a completely field awful terrible gank, but this is to me incorrect. When I come into lane and pressure the enemy off some CS, hence gold and possibly experience, it is an extremely small successful gank. I mean it barely scrapes the barrel but don't hit on the small advantage. It can give your lane some lifesteal time and it also means you show your presence in lane as a jungler, making them play a little bit more cautiously knowing that you're around. It also just gives your guy some time to breathe and go, yes, you know, I'm helped here. It's okay, I can keep it cool, keep it cool. You know, just any breathing room at all, making the enemy play a lot more safely too. Zero, neutral. You zone slash back the enemy laner off, but they don't lose CS. A neutral gank. It's not unsuccessful as you have applied pressure slightly and backed them off, if only for a few seconds. This gives your lane some breathing room that, like I mentioned before and it didn't cost anyone anything. But let your lane know you are helping them and more importantly lets the enemy lane know that you're there, making them play more passively. People forget about the presence of a jungler in a lane. If they see you there, they know you're looking at them and that they're f you are focusing on them. Please guys, presence and pressure is so important and underestimated. Minus one, your laner takes some free damage. If you come to gank a lane and beat your laner into some free damage and the enemy gets away, which is actually quite common, this is an unsuccessful gank, as you have given the enemy some free damage. This normally only happens when an enemy laner is ahead. Minus two, make your laner miss some CS. I've mentioned this in when not to gank. When you make your laner lose CS and no one gets anything from it, it's pretty bad to really bad considering how much they lost from the turret. They're losing a mass amount of money and more importantly an underestimated experience, putting them behind for no reason. A quite unsuccessful gank, but not the end of the world, just not good, please avoid this. Minus three, you slash your laner dying. 
this is a very unsuccessful gank. You put your laner behind rather than ahead. This is awful and basically everyone knows this. I don't have to go into it. You and your laner died. Oh dear. If you both died, you slash your laner messed up big time or got counter ganked which wouldn't really be your fault but it's still unsuccessful. This is a heavily unsuccessful gank. Avoid this at all costs. A double kill for anyone or even two dispersed kills could mean game over for that lane. Or if the enemy leader got a kill each, the jungler is now ahead of you and the enemy leaner is ahead of your laner. So getting back is going to be really hard. Awful gank, awful gank. Minus 5, please never let this happen. Anytime you die and transfer buffs over to the enemy laner. Yes, this is even worse than you and your laner dying. Not only do they get the gold for your kill, but now your top laner, more often than not, is behind a kill and has to go back into a lane and face double buffs. At the start of a game, this is absolutely game breaking. Your lane, already behind due to the kill, now has to deal with red and blue buffs. This is nearly instantly a lost lane with little to no resources or recourse that can stop this happening. There's no application to fix it. Never let this happen. I can't emphasize this enough. Never take big risks with double buffs. But overall, laners remember, some ganks fail. That's just the way the game goes, the way it is. Don't go useless jungler when he simply gets caught on a ward. A jungler has no Super Saiyan form to bypass all wards. He got caught out because you didn't tell him it was warded more than likely. I'm just saying guys, have some empathy for each other, you know? And to junglers out there, do note, even a small helping is a good thing. You know, look at the successful gank and think, how often and how high in the spectrum am I? There are more successful and of course unsuccessful ganks on top of this. You know, like three people dying, four people dying, etc. But this is the nice simple gauge and the most common occurrences that happen. You know, just kind of relate it onwards. You know, if two people die and you lose double buffs, that's obviously like minus six, seven, you know what I mean? It's very simple that way. I just wanted to present it in a quite a small graph and a small spectrum because I didn't really feel I needed this entire huge spectrum of things. It would have been time wasting for you guys. I don't have to explain onwards and upwards. Who should get the kills in a heavily successful gank? This to me can be caught up in two ways. Way number one, unsure success. First up, in a normal gank that could go either way, you should just pump out all of your damage in one go. I don't give a damn if the support gets the kill. If the gank is of unsure slash doubtful success, pile all of your damage down immediately. All roles should simply burst down the target. We don't want even the slimmest chance of their escape to become a reality. As a result of you, slash the leaner, holding an ability for an execution and being greedy. If your support gets the kill, unintentionally of course, and anyone complains, tell them to go F themselves. I am completely sick of this crap and mentality. The support will just sometimes get the kill, as will a tank jungler. You can't do much about that. But it's not like they're useless with the kills, get real. That's just the chance we take when putting an enemy down in an early gank. Don't listen to idiots who complain. Sorry if I'm being kind of spiteful, that's just the way it is. The kill will go to whomever gets it at the start of the game. End of. Way number 2. 99 to 100% sure success. Some ganks will be pulled off perfectly, or you will catch the enemy out of position and break down their escape and have them cornered deep in your territory. This is actually quite a common occurrence if you gank over extended lanes. If this happens and the chance of their escape is almost laughable, I always let the lane get the kill. Don't take the kill, let the lane take it. I know this is solo queue mentality that you don't trust anyone and it's quite big right now. But give the AD carry slash AP carry mid lane whatever the kill. For the most part, they have better carry potential than you. 
I'm not saying never get a kill, at some early stages of the game, you will rarely get this type of gank. And way number one will give you a couple of kills. But do note, free kills are generally to be donated to the carry rolls. As a general rule of thumb, if you're playing a carry jungler, you can get some of the early kills as you can snowball as a carry jungler. This will just be a natural occurrence or you may try to execute some of the early kills. But please don't take all of the kills. Share them out if ever possible, especially to the AD carry and mid lane roles. Anyone else and it's just a fair fight and who gets the kill. If you're playing a tank or support jungler, always try to give the kill over to your laner. Always without exception. Your carry potential is next to non-existent and donations are to be a gift to your team every time. But if you do get a few kills, it's not too bad, it's not the end of the world. You can get ridiculously tanky and use it decently. But for the most part, do please try to give your kills over. Now, please take into consideration who should get the kill from now on. Please don't be this type of jungler that greedily saves his execute to get the kill and be like, yes, yes. Try to disperse the gold over the best people in the team. And if an AD carry slash AP carry come along and there is quite a free kill, please let them have it, please. Their carry potential is a lot higher than yours. I know the solo queue mentality of I get all the kills, I'll carry. It's pathetic. I mean, yes, for the most part, yeah, there are certain people that won't be able to carry. But it doesn't mean we can't have faith in our main carry roles. Even a bad carry who is maxed out will still do a lot of damage with 3 or 4 auto attacks. This much is true. So please try to give the kills over if you can to the main carry rolls. Sorry this is a snippet outside of the guide but I just wanted to reiterate guys please just try to do this. Don't be selfish. Especially when you're fed. If you're fed you don't need more kills. Well guys that's it for the main body of the ganking guide. It's it over. Overall, I can't cover each champion and how they all should gank. Just use my tips and try all of the ganking routes with each champion to see what works best for you and with what champion slash type of ganking champion. Ganking takes massive amount of practice. I can only ask you to keep on working on it. Practice, 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 practice and of course, try to make it perfect. That's it for part 2 guys. And uh, part 3 is coming out soon. It will cover counter jungling. It's going to be very, very advanced. So I hope you guys, I can see you there maybe. I hope to God I've uh, impressed you enough. And uh, thank you so much for watching guys. I really, really do appreciate it. A lot of uh, YouTubers kind of go, oh, thanks for watching. I, guys, I, it makes me so happy to get comments and people just loving the stuff. And I'm actually helping people, which is absolutely fantastic. And um, if you like it, like it. If you dislike it, dislike it. Subscribe if you like me. Unsubscribe and go back if you don't like me. And uh, guys, please share it. It really does help me out um, a lot. I hate this cliche stuff, sharing my stuff. But there, there is a reason why people said it does really help. Uh, any bad jungling friends or bad ganking friends, of course, send it their way. And uh, again, guys, thank you so much for watching. And uh, take it easy. Thanks.